The orders had been relayed through the treacherous enemy lines with a chilling warning that any woman discovered and captured would suffer unimaginable fates. Despite donning the same uniform, wielding the same rifle, and courageously fighting in the war, you were acutely aware that your destiny could be far more harrowing than that of any man. The invaluable contributions of women throughout World War II were vital to the overall war effort. From dedicated nurses and skilled radio operators, to efficient clerks and adept mechanics, from daring pilots to courageous spies, the Allies owed their success to the tireless endeavors of these remarkable women. However, despite their significant contributions, female soldiers on the battlefield were constantly exposed to the peril of capture, which carried grave consequences such as imprisonment in concentration camps or even execution. In this edition of History on Fleek, we delve into the history fate that awaited of female soldiers who fell into the hands of the Nazis. The contributions of female soldiers were indispensable to the war efforts of various nations, including Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Women took on crucial roles as mechanics, pilots, radio operators, clerks, and nurses, among others. Their dedication and skills were vital in supporting the overall military operations. In addition to their specialized roles as spies and resistance fighters, women in the armed forces also took, a significant, also took on significant responsibilities. Among the nations that enlisted women, the Soviet Union had the largest number of female soldiers. Approximately 800,000 women served in the Russian forces, with many even engaging in combat, including roles as snipers and pilots. However, despite their courage and valor, the risk of capture and becoming prisoners of war loomed over all armed soldiers. During the war, numerous women soldiers were captured by the Nazis, and their stories became renowned. One particularly remarkable group was the all-women combat squadron known as the Night Witches. Operating under this name given by their enemies, these fearless women defied societal norms in the Soviet Union, where women were initially prohibited from combat roles. Marina Raskova personally ex appealed to Joseph Stalin, who granted permission to establish female combat units. Starting in late 1941, these air units were formed primarily composed of young volunteers in their late teens and early 20s. The Night Witches, officially known as the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, were highly skilled in conducting bombing runs deep into enemy airspace. They employed a unique attack technique of idling their engines near their targets and gliding to the bomb release point, creating a distinctive sound that resembled broomsticks. This led to the origin of their nickname. Throughout the war, the regiment flew approximately 30,000 hours and dropped over 3,000 tons of bombs. However, these perilous missions put the pilots at great risk and many were captured by the Nazis. Once captured, these courageous fighter pilots faced the grim fate of imprisonment in concentration camps or execution. The invasion of Russia in June 1941 marked the significant encounter of the Nazis with women actively engaged in combat. The German invasion of Russia revealed a startling reality to the Nazis. There were numerous women actively participating in combat within the ranks of the Russian forces. This was a stark contrast to their previous invasions and occupations of other countries where female involvement in armed conflict was minimal. The sight of women carrying firearms and operating field weaponry both shocked and disgusted the Nazis. Moreover, the sheer scale of female participation caught them off guard. Around 200,000 women would be later recognized for their contributions on the battlefield, with 89 of them receiving the esteemed title of Hero of the Soviet Union, the highest military honor. Unable to comprehend or accept the capabilities of these women in uniforms, the German High Command responded with extreme hostility. On June 29, 1941, Field Marshal Gunther von Kluge issued a notorious order stipulating that any captured women soldiers were to be summarily executed. The fate of captured women soldiers on the Eastern Front was sealed not by direct orders from high-ranking officials like the SS or the Gestapo, but rather through the actions of individual commanders on the battlefield. Field Marshal Walter von Reichnau and General Ernst Hammer, among others, press passed on the order to execute captured women soldiers, and this practice became normalized among German troops. The bigoted attitudes and disbelief in women's military capabilities held by Nazi soldiers led to their mistreatment and eventual execution. The German forces invading the Eastern Front captured a 6 million prisoners of war, with roughly half of them losing their lives. The principles of the Geneva Convention, which aimed to protect the rights of prisoners, were disregarded, and many of these prisoners were left to starve to death, highlighting the abandonment of international law during this brutal period. The Nazi forces, despite their claims of professionalism, often resembled a collection of ideologically driven thugs. To the enemy, particularly those who struggled to comprehend, 
To comprehend women in uniform, Russian women soldiers were seen as highly vulnerable prisoners of war. Ordered to be executed upon capture, these women endured significant abuse before their lives were ultimately extinguished. It's known that many of these brave Russian women soldiers were prepared to take their own lives rather than be captured by the Nazis. Their stories stand as a testament to their immense courage and resilience in the face of enemy capture. These women, along with countless others like them, demonstrated remarkable bravery and resilience in the midst of war, leaving a lasting legacy of strength and determination. Kristina Skarbek, hailed as the bravest of the brave, was a Polish agent who worked as a courier for the British Special Operations Executive during World War II. She not only became the first female agent of the service, but also held the record for the longest service. Skarbek's extraordinary espionage missions took her deep into Nazi-occupied Europe, operating undercover and paving the way for recruitment of more female agents during the war. However, Skarbek's daring career was not without its challenges. She was eventually captured by the Gestapo. It was her quick thinking and strategic approach that saved her from a grim fate. When she and her fellow agent were arrested by Hungarian police in Budapest in January 1941 and interrogated by the Gestapo, Skarbek cleverly simulated symptoms of pulmonary, t of pulmonary tuberculosis to convince her captors to release her. By biting her tongue to make it bleed, she deceived the doctor present, who subsequently gave an incorrect diagnosis and allowed her to escape punishment. Nur Inayat Khan, also known as Nora Baker, was a British agent and radio operator for the Special Operations Executive SOE, in France. Despite her non-violence philosophy, she courageously joined the SOE and became a crucial member of the French resistance under the codename Madeleine. Khan's commitment to her mission led her to dangerous situations. Tragically, Khan was betrayed during her undercover work and captured by the Gestapo in 1943. Even in captivity, she remained defiant and uncooperative. In 1944, she and three other women prisoners were taken to Dachau concentration camp where they were executed in the crematorium. To this day, Nur and I Khan is remembered as one of Britain's most exceptional and heroic women of war. Reba Whittle, an American nurse and flight nurse during World War II, exemplified fearless bravery in the face of adversary. Joining the U.S. Army in 1941, she underwent training as a flight nurse and began serving in this novel role in 1943. As a flight nurse, Whittle, as a flight nurse, Whittle faced significant risks retrieving wounded soldiers from the battlefield and assuming responsibilities typically held by doctors, all while aboard aircraft that were susceptible to enemy fire. Despite the dangers, Whittle demonstrated unwavering courage in her service. Her story highlights both the extraordinary bravery of women during the war and the inherent sexism they faced in their roles. In September 1943, Lieutenant Reba Whittle found herself in a perilous situation when her C-47 aircraft veered off course by 40 miles. Although the flight was intended to transport supplies rather than wounded soldiers, Whittle, flying alone, ventured into enemy territory. While flying above Aachen, the aircraft was heavily targeted by German anti-aircraft fire, resulting in injuries to Whittle, a pilot, and the loss of another crew member. The plane eventually crashed into German territory, but Whittle and her surviving crew members managed to escape. However, their freedom was short-lived, as German soldiers quickly surrounded them for capture. The wounded crew received medical treatment at a nearby hospital, but Whittle faced a unique predicament as the only American woman captured by the enemy in the European theater. The Nazis were uncertain about how to handle her as a female prisoner of war, adding to the complexity of her situation. Ironically, the perplexed and patriarchal mindset of the Nazis may have in inadvertently saved Reba Whittle's life. Following her recovery, Whittle was transferred to Stalag I IXC, a Nazi prisoner of war camp, but she wasn't treated as a typical prisoner. Instead, she was assigned to work as a nurse in the camp's hospital. It was during this time that the International Red Cross became aware of Whittle's situation and relayed the information to the U.S. State Department. In January 1945, she was released to the Allies, and upon returning to the U.S. Army, she was recognized for her bravery and service by being awarded the Purple Heart. In a world where women were consistently underestimated, Reba Whittle managed to find a way to serve and survive, always striving for the betterment of others. And that concludes our episode today. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out our other content in our collection. And if you like what we're doing, give us a sub as there is more.